How many bands have you been in? Well, there was Star 67, The Van, Tag Web, Alluvia, uh, Waterleaf, and uh, I think that's about it. Who was the first band you were in? Uh, Star 67. You tell, tell a little bit about that. Um... <laughs> So, me and a buddy of mine met this guy, Ethan. We started hanging out, uh, playing music, and we decided to start a band. He came over one day. Um, at the time, I was really into like heavy metal, Pantera type stuff, and he was into Green Day, and I didn't like Green Day at all. Um, so, he came over and we started trying to jam out, and I wasn't really that great of a guitarist at the time, knew a pentatonic scale. So he started playing these riffs, it sounded like uh, Green Day-ish, and uh, um, started playing music, and uh, that was it, we just started jamming. Right after that we decided that we were going to start writing songs, and so as we were writing songs, it just kind of turned out to be something more than just sitting around writing songs, we actually had a band. Even though we only we were the only two people in the band for like two years, um, we just kind of wrote songs. We played a few shows. We honestly were not that great at all. So um, we uh, we played the show. We played a lot of shows at the uh, at the YST. It's the youth services at Tulsa at their little coffee house thing. Um, we would play these like two hour long sets of like nothing but covers by the Ramones and Green Day and uh, the Dead Milkmen and um, we'd play a lot of our own original stuff but we just really, I mean what can two guys do? It's two guitarists and um, like we weren't, we just really weren't that great. Um, but at the time we honestly thought that we were like the bomb. Couple couple years go down the road, and we meet uh, we meet a few other people. We have a couple different drummers, um, and we have a we have a bass a couple different bass players. But we had um, for some reason we always had difficulties with other people in the band, and I guess for a long time it was because of me. I guess I had like anger issues or whatever. I'd, wanted to practice all the time and wanted to be a really good band and nobody else did. Um, so we went through, I don't know, about three drummers and two bass players. And then we finally got a, a set of people who were really good, who are on our level of playing. Um, and right after that, we decided that we were gonna start recording. We started playing a whole lot more shows. Um, and our band was getting a lot better. And so uh, we, we went to the recording studio and uh, it was just really in this guy's, guy's shack, really. And it was really nice inside, but on the outside it didn't really look too nice. But um, he, you know, had a, had a nice little soundboard or whatever in, in, in his own little editing room. And um, we walked in, we set up all of our amps, we put mics in front of them, we did a live recording. Um, yeah, he put the drums in the drum room, uh, and we just we played. It was it was fun. It was just us jamming for a couple of hours, you know. And we put out five songs. It was a uh, on an album called Zombie Parvo. Um, we wrote a uh, a title track for it. It was about a dog that got Parvo and became a zombie. I mean, that was it. <laughs> But then, you know, things happen, you know, and life goes on. And I wind up meeting my buddy, Devin, again. And I went to school with him, uh, you know, whenever I was like in seventh, eighth grade, you know. When I met Tanner, we had a, a math class, I think it was seventh grade. Like, I don't know, this is like around the time I didn't really, really interact with many people. And I think that's, and Tanner liked to fuck with me in class a little bit. <laughs> 
a lot. <coughs> Because <laughs> I was so quiet, and I, that's I think that's the reason a lot of people did. Because I was so quiet, never talked to nobody, and I can't—I don't know what sparked it on, but he did something, and I swung around and just like freaked out, and was just like, <laughs> <laughs> like I think I hit him, but I'm not sure if I did or not, and that's how we met. <laughs> and then the actual meeting. Like, for, for friends, it was like, later on, like, years later, when I was living in the house, when we practiced doing the band thing, and I just showed up with my girlfriend one day, and he's on the porch with my roommate. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, it's Tanner Friend. And I was like, well, what's going on? I want to be in a band. And I was like, cool. And that was that. Um, but it, initially, it was just us getting high, climbing up in his attic, and jamming out for hours upon hours at 12 o'clock in the morning, you know? And um, we'd jam out to all kinds of music I'd never listened to before, like Janis Joplin and, uh, oh, uh, Neil Young and all kinds of stuff, you know? And I'd just sit there and I'd, I'd take this quarter, man, and like I'd sit there and I'd scrape it on my guitar strings and I'd just made noise. I didn't even play the guitar, I just made noise with it. And I just took a screwdriver, I'd hit the guitar real hard and it'd go, Bang! And I was like, whoa, man, this noise is awesome. That was the coolest part about starting that, though, was the, um, we had this huge attic to, like, play in, and... You know, so we didn't have to like worry about practice space. The only thing that sucked about that was the neighbors, and they always complained about the noise. But like, that never really seemed to be a problem. They're just like, turn it down. And they were just like, no. First show I think was at YST, yeah, with Braxton. It was like our four-piece, like, skater punk sounding thingy. Still in the works. Like, I really enjoyed that, actually. I still miss that a lot. The, when well, we didn't have Braxton, though. Just because I like a trio better. And also, it sounded heavier. Commentary. I'm still kind of working on stuff, kind of like the van, just because that's the sound I've always been going for, like crunchy Nirvana, Melvin's sludge metal kind of thing. I still like to get that going too. Just I don't know, it had so much energy, but also it kind of had like I cared less back then about the way the music sounded like, so that that kind of I think made it a little bit more fun. Instead of now, it's like. Uh, it has to be perfect. I have to, it has to sound just right. And, um, and it'll give me a good release and, like, hell, it actually probably save my life, honestly, because, like, the only other release I had, like, on it, like, to just 
be a person with my girlfriend, but like, you know, that was kind of a bad relationship, to be honest. So like, music really helped me out and actually kept me out of trouble, because I was not in a really good place, but it kept me grounded and I had friends and like a, to like, you know, be with, and I actually had a schedule, so you know, so it was like, you know, every couple of days or whatever, like somebody would be over and would be practicing, usually Tanner. And then somewhere along the line, for a long time, this guy named Mike Gomez from, uh, from Dallas, he's in this band called Earth Rock. And he'd always call me up, he'd be like, hey man, I'm moving up there to Tulsa, and I want, I want to jam out with you. Well, the guy was like 30 years old or something. I was like, yeah, man, we'll jam out whenever you get up here. I was like, I, I play punk rock, though. He's like, and he, he played death metal. And so um, he moved up here, and for a long time, he wanted to jam out with me. And I just never got around to going up there and hanging out with him or anything. In fact, because I was 16 at the time, whenever he moved up to Tulsa, uh, my mom was like, no, I don't want you to go and hang out with like an older guy playing music. And I was like, that's... But then I turned 18 and finally the guy got around, he convinced me to come join his band. He had a fully formed band at this time. And I was like, alright, I'll come, I'll come try out, you know, I'll audition or whatever, you know. And he had an opening. So I went up there, audition went great. It was uh it was pretty cool. We just jammed out, we hung out. And uh that's how I got into Alluvia. It wasn't too long after that that I decided that being in because at this time I was in four four different bands. I was in Star 67, the van a band called Tagweb, which was an acronym for two acoustic guitars and electric bass. Um, and that band did not last but one show. And it was just a jam band. And then I was in uh, Alluvia. And so I decided that my interests were no longer in Star 67 because I couldn't get anybody to practice. Um, so uh, I decided to quit. And... Right after I quit, Alluvia started taking off. We played, you know, we practiced like three or four nights a week for like five hours every night. Um, it was just cool. We just hung out. We jammed out. We wrote songs, you know, and uh, that was it. We we went, um, we played a lot of shows in Dallas. Uh, I talked to a lot of new people, a lot of like corporate-ish people or whatever. I guess I was in Alluvia for... I don't know, a little bit. It was maybe like six, seven months and maybe eight months or so and we practiced a whole bunch and next thing you know, I guess the the lead singer of our band had an affair with the bassist's wife and the bassist and the wife broke up. They, they got a divorce. I was in a band for five years, five years straight. Uh, there was not a single time that I wasn't in a band playing music, doing something.